look what I got. <laughs> Wait, no, how do we do this? Look what I found. I found a Stanford dude. A dude who's going to Stanford. Okay. Um, so basically today is the second episode of Student Spotlight and we're going to see what we got. So Anthony, you want to um, introduce yourself? Sure. So hey, Carrara fans. Um, I'm Anthony. I'm a senior at Saratoga High School. So I'm in the same class as Rohan or Carrara. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll be attending Stanford next year. What did you do in high school, I guess, is the main question. So. Okay, so I guess my spike in high school was music. Um, I didn't, um, I know most people who watch your channel are like math Olympiad kids, science Olympiad kids, but so I might not be their target um, like person, but I did music, so I played saxophone and um, I did marching band and band all four years. I did all state and like done competitions and stuff, the typical stuff, but I think what really um, made me stand out as a musician was that I started a lot of ensembles. So I started like a sax quartets um, that was featured in a marching band show last year and we won a lot of competitions and also started a sax ensemble in the area. And yeah, so I've done a lot of like music stuff pretty much. So I guess um, before we get into more specific on your sax stuff, like what what other, kind, like I know I know when you're in middle school, you your like parents wanted you to do like academic kind of things, but mm -hmm. what made you like decide to do saxophone and like focus on that? Well, I honestly, I tried the Olympiads like in fourth grade, I tried math Olympiad. I wasn't terrible, but I didn't really enjoy it either. I did math club in middle school as well. Um, I wasn't in year level, but I was like, um, like blue team or green team or something. But it, like, I didn't really enjoy it. I just kind of did it because my parents made me. So, but like for saxophone, um, they didn't really expect anything out of it. I just did it for fun because they wanted me to do music. I did play piano as a young, as a kid and I switched to saxophone. Yeah, but like once I came to high school, like I just found saxophone really enjoyable. And like every, um, something I read about in my essay was that every single break, like there was a break during school, every single day during break, I would run to the music building and every single day I would practice um, instead of like hanging with friends or doing homework. That's what I did every day. And I just, it's really stress, it was a big stress reliever and it kind of just grew on me and I kind of just naturally started doing more and more with it. So what do you think you got out of like the like doing saxophone? Like I know I know like personally for my extracurriculars I like built up a lot of like skills that I think will be useful in college. So what do you what do you think you got out of doing saxophone? Um, for saxophone and band, for sure I became more um, extroverted in, in middle school. Um, I don't know if you remember how it was, but in middle school yeah, I, I, I didn't talk at all. Like I was super introverted. I was like super scared of talking, but through music like. I never would have thought that I would have like, be starting ensembles. I'd be reaching out to people, reaching out to professors and like asking them for lessons or asking people to join my ensemble. Like I have the sax ensemble I'm doing right now, we rehearse every week and there's like 20 people and I'm there. I'm the one like leading everybody. And I like, I still don't know how I got here. Um, yeah. And also like marching man as well, really forced me to talk to people and like you were comfortable with strangers. Um, so yeah, like I'm DM now and I kind of have to do that. And I was like session leader, and, uh, woodwind captain as well. So. Yeah, I know you have like a lot of things like you you do like saxophone like I don't, how much time do you spend on saxophone it's like a lot right it depends on like what season like audition season it's like um I had an hour or two a day um but like this past like for last year when I was going to college uh I had to record like three hours every single day so Holy I drove to school every single day and recorded for two or three hours for college um because I also applied to some music schools but in the end it didn't really matter because I got Stanford early um but yeah, it depends on the day, but I generally practice around at least half an hour if I can every day. Um, and on the weekends, it might be a little bit more because I have more time. Yeah, and you do a ton of other stuff too. How do you even make time for all the other stuff? Like, what, what other stuff do you do? Like, um, yeah, just give us some other stuff that you do. Okay. I know you do a lot of stuff. Yeah, so other other than saxophone, I do, um, I have a club at school called ACE. It stands for Aspiring to Create English. Um, it's inspired by this camp or like this volunteering I do every summer. So I travel to Yunnan in China. It's like this rural um, China in rural China, and I teach um, students English there. And so when I came back, I started this club to connect, um, keep like teaching them over the school year. So it's like now um, we started with just students in China, but now we have students in Japan, in Korea, in India, in the Middle East, and probably a few more. Um, so that really started growing. And for that, um, it's like a weekly time commitment. It's not not as much as saxophone, but I also have a really good officer team that helps me out a lot. So I'm really grateful for them. Other than saxophone and ace, I also did CS stuff because I want to major in CS um, or something engineering related at least. Um, so engineering stuff, I did, um, I still studied for APCS in my sophomore year and I got a, got a five on a test. And then after that, I took, um, I did Stanford Pre-Collegiate Studies, the AI camp last summer. And I also did an internship with an AI company last summer. And then 
right now I'm taking a course at Stanford Online High School um, called Data Structures and Algorithms in Java, which is like the post APCS course. So that's about all that I did with CS. But since my main um, spike and main story is music, um, I just did like a little bit of CS stuff. That's like good enough to like show that I, I can do CS. Yeah. Yeah, and also you've taken pretty like tough workload too and that kind of thing. Like academic wise, what, what do you think like are your main things? Yeah, so I, I basically just took whatever was the hardest every year. It kind of came naturally to me. I didn't really even consider doing anything easier than what's the hardest stuff. <laughs> so yeah, I did like, um, so something my dad, my parents wanted me to have by the time I applied to college was to have at least eight APs since eight APs is the National AP Scholar. And I kind of just went with it. I was like, okay, so I still, so like my sophomore year, I self-studied AP Lang and AP CS. And I took AP Euro at school. Um, my junior year, I took AP Physics 1 and 2, AP Calc BC, um, what else? That's three. AP Spanish. A-push? A-push, yeah, yeah, that's one. Okay. Yeah. I and I had AP Chinese my freshman year, so that's nine, I think. Yeah, so then, yeah, so, and then this year I'm taking three courses at school. Um, Go AP Gov, AP Lit, Jazz Band, and um, um, Symphonic Band, Symphonic Wind Ensemble. So, and at Stanford Online High School, I'm taking um, the Java course I talked about, Multi, um, and AP Physics C, E, and M, and Mechanics. So, yeah, so I just did whatever was the hardest. So, especially for my senior year, I applied to Stanford Online High School so I could take courses that are, like, beyond um, what is offered at Saratoga. Yeah, and I got uh, straight A's. Yeah. yeah, so I know you have, like, a ton of stuff on your resume, but, like, what, what do you think, like, really, whoops. <laughs> What do, what do you think like helped you in like um in your college apps the most or like what did you what, what do you think you like talked about a lot or like spotlighted in your college apps do you think for my essays um they're like 80 percent music and like 20 percent cs slash engineering so for music I, I really talked about the people i met rather than like competitions or something because that's really what meant the most to me um like for my common app I talked about everything that I did, but most of all, I focused on like the people I met through what I did through music. Yeah, and then like I, made, I kind of crafted a story. So like something, I made everything that I did kind of connect to music. Like when I volunteer in China, I brought my saxophone with me and I played music for them. And um, yeah, so I made everything connected to music. And for the, even for the CS ones, I kind of like um, talked about how I did those in current, currently to music. Well, I guess like the next thing we could talk about is you do so much random stuff. Um, how how do you like balance all of it with like school? Cause you take like the hardest car courses. You have like a ton of time on band, and then like dude, band is like one of the worst worst extracurriculars in terms of time commitment. And you like manage to do well in all of them. So how what, what what's your secret? <laughs> it's not really a secret. I guess it's cause I really enjoy band. Like band, I don't take think of as an extracurricular. It's more of like a privilege to do it. I like really like when I um when school is still in session, like when we're still in person. Um, band rehearsals would be like a break for me. So like, I'd be happy to like, just stop my homework, get up and go to band for two, two or three hours of rehearsal. It's like, and we get to hang out with my friends, basically. It's just like a chill time. Um, so I didn't really think of it as like work, right? It was more play or like fun. Um, but still, even then I had to like really manage my time. Um, and so sometimes I like, um, I opt to like skip a saxophone practicing for a day to do my homework. Cause there's, there's a lot of work. And, um, but I still managed to get like quite a bit of sleep, like at least like eight hours for the first two years. I'm pretty proud of that. Um, sleeping is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah, dude. So, yeah, same, like eight hours. If, if you manage to get eight hours of sleep every day, you are in good shape, okay? Because <laughs> that yeah, means yeah. that you're managing your time. Wow, well, yeah. very nice. Oh, something, yeah, something that I can do that like a lot of others can't for some reason is for tests, like people usually study for weeks ahead, but I study the night before, like I've done that historically. Every single test I've studied for just the night before, even for a history test, even for the AP Chinese test, I studied it, studied for it the night before. I legit, I stood like right there. I have my notes like on that little bench thing. And I just remember, I have like 30 pages of like notes, right? I memorized everything the night before, the dates, like the names of the people, like the important people, the day they're born, the day they died, where they're from and stuff. <laughs> I memorized all of that. And I took the test and I forgot all of it <laughs> right after. Dude. So, yeah, I think I have an OP short-term memory, but like it's it's not good for legit learning, but it's good for test taking. So I think that was really good for me. <laughs> Dude, I cannot do that. Well, to be fair, I can't memorize it even if I start memorizing it a very long time ago. But <laughs> dang, I did not know that. That's pretty impressive. Um, so I guess general tips. Do you have any like tips for like middle schoolers or like uh, underclassmen, like in terms of what they should do, like when they're 
like what they should spend their time on or how they should spend their time? Sure. So, I mean, I know most of your audience is like Olympia people, but um, for me, like looking back in hindsight, you know how a lot of people say like, just do what you like. And I, I, I was pretty skeptical of that. I was like, when I was applying to college, I know I, I, was, I told you about this, but I was like super scared because I didn't do like the math Olympiads and all those competitions. Like I, cause every, like a lot of people at Saratoga do it like you and like a, like a bunch of your friends and my friends, they all do this competition. So I was scared because I'm planning for engineering um, for a lot of schools. Like for all the UCs, I had to apply for engineering. And so I really didn't think I was going to get into any of them, but I didn't get into a lot of them. So um, I guess in that case, like I feel like really do what you like what you enjoy and do something that doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like you're trying to just doing this for college or like you're doing this cause it's hard or do you think it's cause like um, it's competitive or something, I don't know. But find something that like you wanna do in high school that you enjoy and like something that you do for fun, but it's something that you can write about. And like that for me, that was music. And like, I really got lucky. I didn't, I didn't really look for anything to do. I just kind of just did whatever came to me. I got lucky with music and it just, um, really grew on me and I really liked it. So, yeah. Oh, what, which college did you apply to? Or, well, I mean, I don't know if you're comfortable, but like, just like, um, which college did you apply to? Where do you get in that kind of stuff? Yeah. So I applied to Stanford early action. Um, my counselor actually advised me to not do that because it was, he thought it was really tough, but, um, I also recommend, yeah, something when you're applying to college, I recommend you apply to like um, Stanford or Yale early because they have a lot of essays in this one application and you can reuse that a lot. So that was super good. I'm super happy I did that. And then, so I did that. I did all the UCs except UC Merced and UC Riverside. So I got into Stanford early and then for UCs, I got into all the ones I applied to except for UCLA I got waitlisted and UC Davis I got waitlisted, which is kind of weird. Yeah, I know. Um, it's so weird. I, I got waitlisted at UC Irvine, but not the other Really? Ones. What the so, heck? So whack, I don't know. Yeah, and I got, I got regents at UC Irvine and honors at UDS, UCSC, and I got offered a seed um, to apply for seed scholarship at Berkeley. So that was pretty cool. And I applied for CS for all of them. For Berkeley, I did LNS CS because as I said, I was like super scared about not getting in, so I just did what was safest. Um, yeah, and then other than that, um, I did USC, uh, applied early for Marist. So basically, I, I applied for, after I got to Stanford, so with December, Stanford came out on December 11th. After that, I only applied to Harvard. So before that, I applied to the schools with like, um, merit deadlines and music deadlines. So music deadlines are also December 1st. So I applied to USC for merit and BU for merit. I got into BU, but I didn't get the scholarship. And I got flat rejected from USC. Um, yeah. And then for music, I applied to UMich and Northwestern's dual degree program. But after I got to Stanford, I withdrew my app, my music application from both of those schools because I didn't want to waste the professor's time and then auditioning me. So but I got waitlisted at UMich, which is surprising because um, if I did a college of engineering as my second choice, and then I got rejected at Northwestern. Um, oh, and I also applied to CMU's um, BS BCSA program. If you're in music and CS, that program is so cool. Like it's a dual degree, not dual degree, it's one degree, but it's CS and arts. Um, so then I got into that program, which is super cool. Yeah. Oh, dang, nice. Wait, how, how long did it even take you to apply to all those places? How many, what, that's a lot. How long? Yeah, it's it a lot. I mean, I had, I had a lot more plans, so I scrapped a lot of applications afterwards. Um, so like after Stanford, I only applied to Harvard, which I got waitlisted. I forgot to mention that. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I was like grinding essays. I, yeah. So this past semester, like fall semester, I just like, after I finished my homework, it was about one or 2 AM and I grind essays for like an hour every day. That's kind of what happened. Dang. And then because during the day I would, cause for the music schools, there's a lot of music requirements is Northwestern and you are like the top saxophone schools. So they have a lot for you to do. So I basically spent, like I said, two or three hours every day in the afternoon recording for those. Um, yeah, the sad thing is I didn't end up using them because I, I got into Stanford, but it's okay. Why don't we talk about your summer stuff? So, Cause you said you did a couple of oh, interesting sure. things during summer. So uh, yeah. wanna tell us a little bit more about those kind of things. Yeah, I think what's interesting about my summers and that the fact that I got into Stanford is that I didn't really do anything over the summers, to be honest. Like I know most people could talk about like their camps, like. I don't know business people do like launch X or whatever. I don't know. And then uh, CS engineering people do like those MIT camps. I don't even know what they're called. <laughs> and I, I just, I guess I never really bothered to apply to them. I didn't really think I, I would qualify either. So basically for my first three summers, first two summers, um, freshman, sophomore summer, I just went on vacation with my family. And then I did that camp in um, rural China and taught English to the students for like 10 days. And I had a band camp at the end of the summer. And that was it. That was my first two summers. And then for my last summer, for, since it was um, COVID affected, 
I just applied to like two or three music camps for saxophone, just for fun, because I wanted to do that. And then I did the Stanford um, Pre-Collegiate Studies um, AI camp. So that was the one legit camp I actually did. And then I also had an internship. So that was, that was my, might've been the most legit summer in a way, but like on my Stanford um, app, they asked what you did for your past two summers. And I talked just, I just talked about like going to the Tokyo Pokemon store with my brother and like just exploring that. And like, I feel like that gave them more personality rather than just saying I attended some so-and-so camp and so-and-so camp. Yeah. So yeah, honestly, like, yeah, as long as you give personality, I think that's a good, yeah. a good piece of advice. Cause like, I try to put humor in my essays. I don't know how well it worked, but <laughs> I felt like it would be stupid and not like at least show yeah, a little exactly. bit of voice. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. What was your biggest regret in high school? Just in general. Um, I only asked the tough questions, Anthony, you should know this. <laughs> I guess something that comes to mind first is like the clubs at Saratoga. Like I didn't do any really. I did like two or three, like legit. Um, but I wish I joined more clubs my freshman year um, and got to know more of the upperclassmen and more of my friends, like and my classmates, and like what they do. And like I feel like I feel like I would have enjoyed some of them. Like even the STEM clubs. Like I didn't know we had a computer science club until this year. Not gonna lie. Dang it! I should have advertised <laughs> to you, bro. Yeah. I guess I never really looked out for any clubs, but yeah, and I, I went to a few meetings and it's actually pretty interesting. Um, but all, at the same time, club culture at Saratoga isn't the best. Like, um, we're like infamously in the club, like member count is pretty low for all the clubs. Um, so it might not be the biggest regret, but it's also something I wish I could have done. Let's just like meet more people. Cause I feel like I'm, I'm kind of in a band circle. Most of my closest friends, like, no, like, yeah, most of my closest friends are just band kids and music kids I've met. But that does also mean I know a lot of people from a lot of other schools because um, at like competitions and they like, got honor bands, I always like walk around uh, talking to people because I really enjoy it. Um, yeah, I, I don't honestly overall I don't really regret anything. Um, I feel like my high school career wasn't really stressful. It was pretty fun. Most of most most of all, it was really fun just doing band and music, and it worked out. I got me really lucky. Yeah. Okay, and then we could end on talking about what you plan to do in college and that, like, how you chose CS or and that kind of stuff. Okay, to be completely honest, I would play saxophone and for the rest of my life if I could and make a reasonable living, but the likelihood of that is really low. <laughs> Not gonna lie, music doesn't pay, right? So, um, I mean, and, and I I do enjoy CS. Like, I don't hate it. It's not like I love it as much as you do, probably, or like the maths, but like it's, I don't hate it, so like it's fine. But so at Stanford, I'm thinking of tentatively, I'm a major in CS, but I really, I saw this other program called MSNE at Stanford called Management Science and Engineering. It's kind of like the MET program at Berkeley. Um, and I'm, yeah, so I'm, since Stanford doesn't really make you declare a major until like the end of sophomore year, I'm going to like really explore like other stuff. I'm also thinking about MECI. So not just CS, but um, I'm really looking to like more hands-on engineering and like exploring what, what Stanford has to offer. Yeah. Kidding. Mickey's kind of cool. Robotics and like making yeah, stuff. Yeah, right? That's kind of cool. Oh, that's that's a good regret too. I wish I did robotics. I I did robotics in eighth grade, and I was like, I was pretty good at it. I I really liked it, and I didn't really I didn't I didn't, I, didn't, I wish I joined robotics um like earlier in high school. Like when I really heard, learned about it, it was too late. I was like a junior. Like probably not gonna get anything out of this, so I didn't do it. But robotics was seems cool too. Yeah, same dude. I kind of wish I did robotics. That it looks yeah. so cool now, and now that I look yeah. back on it. Well, I guess are there any clothing comments from? The one and only Anthony Chin. <laughs> the one and only. Um, not really. Thanks for having me. It's, a, it's an honor. Um, on the great Carrara's channel. <laughs> Dude, you gotta tell them to subscribe. Come on. Oh, oh yeah. yeah subscribe. Yeah, subscribe, like this video, comment, uh, Rohan's cute. <laughs> what? No. Uh, take me what? out sometime. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah, you guys should yeah, do that. Uh, I would appreciate that very much. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, thank you guys for coming. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully it was helpful to see what a Stanford dude like Anthony has done in his high school career. And other than that, we are done for today. So thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.